Hello and welcome to the sixth tutorial on using Foxdoc. This time we'll be looking at referencing player attributes and creating what I like to call dynamic systems. One of the main reasons I had for developing Foxdoc was that I wanted to be able to have patterns follow other existing patterns in music. For example, uh, this code is using a random number generator uh, for pitch and it sounds like this. I wanted some easy way to take that pitch information and use it elsewhere in my program as easily as possible. So one way I could do this is to define the relationships outside of the player objects. So I'm using pitches plus two to define a harmonic relationship between the pitches of one player and another. What happens if I change the duration of one of these players? That harmony that I wanted is now lost. Uh, I mean, it sounded kind of interesting, but it wasn't the desired output. So the solution in this case is to use the follow method, which forces one player object to always hold the same pitch value as another. So it's just dot follow, and then you give it the um, player object that you want to follow. And you can use the add operator on the outside of the player object to uh, define the relationship between those. So we're using a plus two, which we did up here, to create a harmony. And even if I change the pitch of P1 without revaluing P2, it will always hold the same value. And I can do uh, the same thing for other attributes, such as duration. So uh, the follow method is doing exactly that. It's actually equivalent to Um, and then adding that value. So the follow method, yes, yeah, doing that. Um, when you reference a player's attribute like this, um, i.e. p1 dot, whatever, degree or duration, um, you are given an instance of something called a player key, which is essentially just a value that is constantly being updated by that player. And you can do whatever mathematical operation on the value uh, that you like. So here we're just adding a simple number two, but uh, we can add a list or a group and do multiple operations. So you can think of them a bit like the var objects that I discussed in one of the previous tutorials. Uh, a single value that changes state 
as opposed to a list of values that you iterate over. With that in mind, we can nest these player key values in amongst a list of values if you only want to reference another uh, player's value for some other time. Okay, so let's say we have a baseline. Okay, so we're using the var here to sort of get a bit of a chord sequence going. Referencing the uh, degree, the pitch from the bass, and then playing a four. Um, so right now I'm going to uh, continually add to this and, and use the B1 degree reference. Um, see if you can follow what's happening. So let's go again. notice that uh, even when I changed uh, B1, the that B2 was referencing new pitch values. So this is what I like to call a dynamic system, where any changes made to one part of the program propagate out to the rest of it. So this is called reactive programming. Uh, you don't usually find it in Python, but it's actually really helpful when you're programming music and you have these relationships. So I want to introduce one more feature of the player key, which is the equals equals operator, usually, usually used to test if two things are the same or they're equal. Um, so if I did something like degree equals equals four, it'll return a zero if p1.degree is not currently four, but it'll equal uh, it'll return a one if the degree currently is a uh, is that value. So p1 degree is currently a five, but it's left over from before. So you can see it returns a one rather than a zero. Um, so where we were doing things like p1.degree add to, it gives us um, that value plus a transformation. This transformation is sort of testing if that value is another value. Okay, so um, it's gonna be really useful in some situations. Uh, so here's an example. This is my drum pattern here, and I wanna use the sample number two just for the kick drum. Um, so I could use something like this. Um, OK, 
Okay, and I also you know, use the sample number five for the hi-hat, so I'd have to do this. Um, but every time I change the string here, I'd have to readjust my sample pattern over here, which is a bit of a pain. Or I might be using curly braces, so I don't actually know if this is going to be hi-hat or kick drum or, or anything else. Um, so this is where the equals equals operator uh, comes in handy. So if I use it on D1 degree, so I'm actually referencing the player itself. Um, I will get a zero um, if it is not X, um, but a one if it is. And if I want it to be a two when it is, I just multiply it by two. So here's what you get. So that last one was just a one when it was, uh, when it was a kick drum. If I want to have multiple conditions, that is um, sample number two for a kick drum and sample number five for the hi-hat, I can sort of chain these together so I can add these conditions. And that's what we wanted, but it's a little bit messy. It's a little bit confusing, especially if you want to use even more of these. So when using multiple conditions, um, it's useful to use the player keys map method and you give it a dictionary to map to. So here we map the X to a two and the hyphen to a five and that'll do the exact same thing. I can easily add, I can map the U, that snare, to a different snare. And I can use VARs and other uh, things in there, even other um, player keys. And that's a really easy way to have sort of conditional mapping in a player object. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.